You are listening to From Ring to Veil. I'm Shannon. And I'm Kim. And we are your wedding planning gurus. We take the stress out and put the fun back into wedding planning. What to wear. Reception, bridal shower, engagement photos, and rehearsal dinner episode number 177. Take a second, pause, and subscribe to the show if you have not yet. And if you'd like to, please share us with your friends. Let them know that we're here and we are very helpful. We answer so many questions that you are either asking or thinking to ask. Uh, Just give, give us a little share. Don't forget to join our Facebook group for Ring to Veil Wedding Planning Community. Search for it. You'll find it. Answer a couple of questions. Make sure you answer the questions, please. <laughs> or you're not getting in. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then you get some great advice from wedding professionals, us, and fellow wedding planning couples. So there you go. If you're getting married in the Seattle metro area, and that includes Snohomish, Issaquah, Redmond, Woodenville, if you're getting married in this area, or if you have a friend who is or know somebody who is please let them know and we want to let you know that we do have a wedding planning resource guide it it contains over 50 vendors that we have vetted that we have talked to that we have worked with that we trust that we say you can trust them too so if you want this resource guide we have it in two options it's a there's a paperback option where you actually get a printed version where you can make notes Write down things, rip out pages, whatever you need to do. You can find that at fromringtoveil.com slash RG paperback. Or we have a Kindle version, which is fromringtoveil.com slash RG Kindle. And these are both in the Amazon store. If you just go to Amazon and search Wedding Planning Seattle, those two will come up for you. Okay, so we got a message from a listener uh, on Instagram, and it was she was really sweet. She says, "I love your podcast, and I just listened to top ten song the top ten song episode, the top ten songs episode, <laughs> and I felt compelled to tell you my top three songs." Which awesome! Please let us know what you guys think. Uh, we would love to know. We kind of went off what what we were feeling at the time. She said that she's always thought of the father-daughter dance as being her song to him. So from the daughter to the dad. But she loves the idea of it being his song for her. Anyway, here are her top three. Paper Moon by Ella Fitzgerald. La Vie en Rose by Edith Piaf, I think is how you say it. Edith. Huh? Edith Piaf. Edith Piaf. Okay, maybe it's Edith. Okay. It says edit here. Sorry. (laughs) Uh, There is an English and a French version, she says. And, okay, this is a a French song. So, La Trois (laughs) du Moi by Carla Bruno. So, I know I I botched that because I do not speak French. I'm sorry. Uh, What I love (laughs) about the last song is that it is the classic You Are the Sun to My Moon uh, sort of thing. But the objects are uh, complimentary. As in, you are the flame to my light. She says, uh, you always encourage listeners to write in. So there you have it. <laughs> uh, she's enjoying the podcast. So thank you so much for, for sending us this. So you can reach us on, on Instagram and give us your, your thoughts and your comments. We love the feedback. Uh, if you do want to send us something, email specifically info at fromringtoveil.com. But again, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Pinterest, you can message us through Pinterest, wherever, if you have any thoughts or comments to anything that you've heard or listened to or found, maybe you found something that we need to update. Please let us know. Today, we're talking about what to wear to all of the other happenings going on in your wedding besides the wedding. Well, there's the reception in there, Mm -hmm. but the ceremony, I guess you could say. Yeah, the ceremony. What do you wear to your reception if you're going to change your dress, the bridal shower, engagement photos, rehearsal dinner? We're going to give you some guidelines and ideas. Of course, Kim and I are both what we would call laid back in style. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> we're we are happy in T-shirts and jeans and shorts and yoga pants and, you know, because you don't see us all the time. That's so right. you don't know, you know. That's right. I do like to dress up every once in a mm-hmm. while. Of course, my when I go out, I'm most I'm the most dressed up one, and my husband is, as we've always discussed, 
in jorts. So anyway. And superhero t-shirts. Yes. <laughs> so again, just guidelines. We did uh, talk to some of our friends about this and uh, did our research, of course. We're not just leaving you hanging with just our dumb thoughts. <laughs> yeah, put on some jeans and a t-shirt. You'll be fine. Uh, so yeah. let's start off with the reception. First of all, you do not have to change your dress. You do. You, there's not a hard, fast rule that you have to change your dress. But you can if you want to. It's totally up to you. A lot of these dresses are these mermaid styles. Mm -hmm. They're really tight fitting column dresses all the way down to the bottom where they poof out. I don't know how you dress in that or dance in that anyway. Yeah, right. (laughs) I could barely walk in something like that. No, nonetheless, dance in it. And you don't really want me to walk down the aisle in that kind of dress anyway because I'll fall flat on my face. (laughs) Yeah, because, you know air trips me so Mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter but some people want to stay in their gown the whole time because they just love it so much and they've Mm. paid a pretty penny for it sometimes you know (laughs) and they just don't want to give up taking it off yet and and that's fine too if you can like you like shannon said you can move around and dance and and feel comfortable in it then absolutely you're fine with it but if you have something you can't dance in you might want to change. You really you really have to think about that when you're buying your dress. Or even sit in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Cuz that would be a long night standing all night. Yeah. So you can go from a formal gown to a less formal dress. Kind of like, you know, we talked to we talked about the royal mm-hmm. wedding a couple of weeks ago. She, you know, had the formal dress that had to follow all of these rules mm-hmm. to walk down the aisle to Prince Harry. And for the reception, she had the mo- the most sexy white dress I've seen in a while. Yeah. You know? It wasn't too revealing. It just showed her shoulders. It was cut perfectly for her, everything like that. So if you want to do that, hey, great. Because if you're getting married into a Catholic church or something like that, maybe they have guidelines. Mm-hmm. I'm not Catholic. I don't know. That's true. We, sh- we, c- we should check up on that and see what religions have, <laughs> what kind of... Uh, uh, rules on their gowns but like like yeah. she could have wore either one of those if she didn't have all the rules for the first one as her wedding mm-hmm. gown you know she had two right. really really beautiful gowns and you could even go less formal than that you could find a really pretty like like shannon likes those kind of 50 ish housewife looking mm. you know with the floral <laughs> and you could do that absolutely get you what what are the pedophores underneath and make it real fluffy and it, mm-hmm. You could do something totally cute like that. Yeah, go retro. Yeah. That's always my idea because I love them. But anyway, if I had to, if I had to do my wedding over again, that's what my dress would mm-hmm. be. <laughs> well, the vow renewal. <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll have one. It is our it is our twenty fifth wedding anniversary, but we're not doing a vow renewal. You could, so y- there's no rules. You could do it for the twenty eighth. <laughs> If you want to forego the dress, you can go for a pantsuit or a jumpsuit. They have some really cute ones out there, some really kind of fancier looking ones, you know, maybe all white or something like that. There's some cute stuff out there, so you don't have to stick with a dress. Because mm. you might not be even wearing a dress anyway. I guess. <laughs> some people don't wear dresses. I like the two-piece wedding thing because I've seen them where they're there are two pieces and there's an attached longer skirt under, you know, over a shorter skirt. Is that where you could take the longer skirt off or whatever? Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen those. Those are great. I've also seen it where it was two piece and it's just a tulle skirt and a nice top. If your wedding's informal or whatever and you want it laid back and relaxed, psh, I'd do something mm-hmm. like that. I think that'd be super cute. Like the one that really sticks out in my mind is the flannel shirt and the tulle skirt. <laughs> I just love that look. So, I mean, you could totally do it up however you want to. Change the bottom, change the top, whatever is most comfortable to help you move around and and dance and all that. Uh, You can change your jewelry options. Let's say you're wearing the same ceremony dress, but you want to change it up a bit. Maybe you change your hair and you change your jewelry. So you give it kind of a little bit different of a look. And don't forget, you know, you're going to be dancing And if you're wearing a long formal dress, maybe you had to wear high, really high stiletto heels in it. If you're changing your dress, you can change your shoes. Find some cool dancing shoes. Wear Converse. Of course, those are very comfortable to me. They're not me either. 
I mean, I love them, but I can only wear them for so mm-hmm. long. Hey, find some Crocs, man. <laughs> I don't know. Can you dance in Crocs? I would think they'd stick to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> they'd squeak a lot, uh, I think. Anyway. Or heads or something cute. I mean, flats, yeah. whatever. Just dancing shoes. Something that's going to be comfortable, right? Yeah, Keds has a whole line of, like, wedding type. Yeah, they do. Fancy shoes. So Some people dance in, well, if you watch these shows, they have those heeled dancing <laughs> shoes, you know, and I just don't know how they do it, but I guess that's the way it is. Anyway, yeah. dancing shoes. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we're going to the bridal shower. So now you got to think about, okay, where is this bridal shower taking place? What are we going to do? And then you can decide what you need to wear. I encourage the bridesmaids, whoever is hosting this shower, not to do a surprise shower. Because I've heard these horror stories <laughs> where they had these surprise wedding showers and the bride shows up in like yoga pants and her hair is in a top knot. Oh she has no makeup on or anything like that because she didn't know where she was going. They didn't give her any clue. They just told her to show up. Right. And she thought it was maybe coffee you know yeah or spa day or something yeah and so you know she's showing up and all these people are there and she's in her ratty clothes i would say if you're going to do that you better give tell her what to wear (laughs) don't surprise her like that and you know those don't make for good or or unless you're going to have a change of clothing for her something you know because that's mean yes (laughs) somebody comes in there and puts her makeup on and fixes her hair too because i mean if i'm going somewhere like coffee i'm not gonna dress up unless somebody says Hey, dress up. Yeah. And then you're going to be like, well, what, why? But even well, still. <laughs> I mean, even if you're like, hey, we're going to brunch, mm-hmm. you know, it's a nice brunch place. Just put something like that. Yeah. <laughs> then she'll know not to wear the top knot and, the, you know, no makeup and yoga pants. So. <laughs> well, the uh, bridal shower is less formal than the rehearsal dinner, but hopefully not yoga pants less <laughs> formal. <laughs> hey. Those Noga pants from Duluth Trading Company are awesome. Are they? Tell you. <laughs> They're just yoga pants for not doing yoga. <laughs> you could do all kinds of stuff in them. Oh, you can't see through I mean, them, hopefully, right? No, they're Good. really thick. Good. Mm. Yay. Anyway. Uh, but it is also a little more conservative than your bachelor party. So, or bachelorette party. Yeah. Just keep that in mind. You can wear something similar to your dress, maybe shorter. If you want, you know, like if you're having a real long, maybe ball gown dress, do something retro, you know, bring that 50 style in. Hey, <laughs> I know you're pushing for that. Yeah. You can do jumpsuits, too, for this. It's it's not super formal, but it's also not super casual. It's just a, a nice little in between there if you're into jumpsuits or even mm-hmm. a pantsuit or something like that. Something that uh, you don't have to wear a dress for. <laughs> Cream and white is totally acceptable. You're the bride. You can wear white. Mm -hmm. And you are the star. So Mm. look at, you know, you want to stick out a little bit. You want to be the one that people are paying attention to, just like the wedding. If it's a formal, you want something classic and elegant. You know, there could be elegant pantsuits, which I'm not a pantsuit fan (laughs) because I have a long torso. I have a, I have kind of a long torso, so they don't really fit me very well. (laughs) And that's how you, that's how you know how you need to wear or what right. you need to wear. Right. And, you know, I don't like him to hurt my feelings. Because, you know. <laughs> or uh, if you're doing more casual, you can go for strappy sandals and summer spring fun dresses. Flouncy skirt or dress. Hmm. It, you know, it all really depends on where it's taking place. What you guys are going to be doing. Are you going to be getting down in the ground doing all these shower games <laughs> or are you going to be taking lots of kind of formal pictures with everybody? Just give a good think about where you're going to be and what you're going to be doing before you decide to plan. And talking about wedding showers, a great place to register for guests for your wedding shower is Zola. You know, Zola does make it so easy to register for everything by just going on and clicking buttons and answering questions and it kind of helps to guide you through this so it's very easy to use zola also has the widest selection of gifts for every room in your home they carry gift cards for travel like delta southwest airbnb and hotels.com so you can you know ask for those to help with your honeymoon 
And you can even create a free wedding website. And that can be helpful for especially things like showers and telling your guests where they need to be and when they need to be. So Kim and I created an account and we kind of registered for gifts. It was very, very easy. Like we said, it's just a point and click kind of thing. And you can find all kinds of sorts of things. And it was easy and simple. And we loved it. And we bought, we ordered several things. So (laughs) we sure did. (laughs) (laughs) So to sign up with Zola and receive a $50 credit towards your registry, go to Zola.com slash FRTV. That's Z-O-L-A dot com slash FRTV. On to engagement photos. And this is where we got some good help from our friend Kate over at G Squared Weddings, who actually this weekend is doing a From Ring to Veil podcast listeners, listeners <laughs> wedding. I'm just so excited that just I, I you can't I can't tell you how excited I am. They found Kate through the through the podcast, contacted her, and now she's doing their wedding down in California. That's cool. Yes. That, that that just shows you how valuable our episodes are and, and our friends and vendors. Therefore, that's why we did the resource guide. There are links to that resource guide in the show notes from ringtovail.com slash 177 or even right there on your podcast app. Hopefully that app supports linkable uh, or clickable links so you could find it there. But yay. Yay. Thank you, Kate. (laughs) So for engagement photos, you want to be yourself. You don't want to be, you don't want to portray somebody you're not. Okay. Because that's not you and your significant other. Mm -hmm. You want to be yourself during these photos. So wear something you don't have to worry about over the whole time. You know, it doesn't have to be formal stuff. It could be casual looks. Hey, if you both like flannel, wear flannel. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Those are some of the cutest pictures. Especially in the fall, you know, Mm -hmm. because, you know. Warm and cozy and fall colors and things like that. One key point is to wear, to dress on the same level, meaning don't wear a ball gown if he's wearing cargo shorts. You know, keep it, keep it the same. If he's, if he wants to wear some kind of a suit, then you maybe need to not match exactly, but be on the same level as him. Don't, don't go Mm -hmm. wearing your Noga pants. You know what I mean? Yeah. coordinate but don't be 20 please do not know like if you're do something on the same color scale maybe but don't like you don't have to twin yeah wear the same shirt sometimes that's just creepy (laughs) twinning is for twins yeah dress to blend or fit into your shooting location so if you're outside and you're in the forest you could do something spectacular, like wear something totally opposite than the forest, and then that would make sense. But but just look at what your surroundings are and try to blend in, uh, maybe not necessarily color-wise, but, you know, flannels in the forest, perfect. <laughs> Tight fitting might not be your best friend, especially for photos. That's right. You can't really Photoshop out that. <laughs> yeah. And most photographers nowadays aren't going to do that. You can either hire a makeup artist or a hair artist or plan your photo shoot on the day of your practice run just so you have something that you feel really special in. Um, Usually for photos, a little more makeup sometimes makes you pop. Mm -hmm. So here's some advice from Kate from G Squared Weddings. Avoid the black and khaki white and jeans get more creative jewelry is good wear your jewelry wear your your jewelry that you don't wear every day maybe uh, something special that was that he gave to you something like that mm-hmm. color is good so are patterns they just make sure they don't clash with your surroundings and with your significant other that's right <laughs> polka dots and stripes yeah if you're wearing polka dots and he's wearing stripes that's not really gonna look make good photos so Wear shoes that are clean. This is a really good one because, <laughs> and that you like. They will show a lot in the photos. And let's say you're sitting down and you see the bottom of the shoes. You know, you don't want to have stepped in something and left it there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> if you want to wear a hat, bring it with you, but don't put it on right away. Like if you got your hair done, if the man has his hair all nice and he puts on a hat, He's stuck with the hat. Yeah, that's right. 
I'm sure they like to work it to where you could, you have hatless pictures and then hat pictures. And that <laughs> yeah. way you've got your options. Don't tan within three days of your session. And if you spray tan, do it light. Don't go super dark. Or orange. That's right. <laughs> so thank you, G Squared Weddings, uh, for those awesome tips. Now we're on to the rehearsal dinner. And I think this is a hard one for people to figure out because it's not like, I mean, it's not formal, but it's not casual. It's just kind of in between and people are like, well, I don't know what to wear. Do I buy a new dress or? Well, usually the rehearsal dinner comes after the rehearsal. So if your rehearsal is in a church, you want to be respectful of the church, Mm -hmm. I think. If it's at a hotel or anything, if it's an upscale hotel, you don't want to walk, walk in there with jeans and tennis shoes or sneakers, right? Mm-hmm. To me, that's just that's just my thinking. So and if it's a nice restaurant, you don't want to go in there in jorts and a superhero t-shirt like my <laughs> husband would or if I didn't make him change. So, you know, just make it appropriate. That's right. Consider where it's taking place, like you said. Where where are we having the rehearsal dinner? Are we have a picnic in the park. Fine, you know, wear yeah. picnic attire. Remember, you're always allowed to look better than everyone else. That's okay. <laughs> it's all about you guys. So try going to, with an outfit opposite or very different from what your dress will be, just to change it up some, you know. Especially if you're keeping it like a surprise, sort of, or. Or secretive or something like that. If you want to go super trendy, do it. Yeah. Steer clear from white unless you must. You could even go with a fun theme for your rehearsal dinner. Maybe you're having a luau. Yeah. (laughs) That would be so fun. (laughs) And then you're having a wedding on the beach. Yeah. That would be so. ah. Yeah. Luau's are fun. You You can wear the grass skirt and the coconut bra. You know? Yeah. Hey. Or a t-shirt that has a grass <laughs> shirt and a coconut bra on it. <laughs> oh, totally up to you. So anyway, hopefully we've given you a couple of ideas and a little bit of guidelines so that you can succeed in what you wear um, to all of these functions. Mm-hmm. And if you have any ideas on that, please let us know. If there was something either you did or you've seen or you want to do, maybe it's on your Pinterest board, whatever, Please let us know and uh, we will add it to this and talk about it a little bit more in the next episode. It's been a while since we had a listener question. (laughs) Hasn't it? Well, we made uh, the reception timeline was from a listener question. So I guess. Okay. We received a question the other day and I'm sorry I have not gotten back to you. It's been a weird few weeks, so, but I'm going to answer here. It says, hello, I've been listening to your podcast for a while now, and I absolutely love it. You have so many wonderful ideas and tips. My fiance and I got engaged in August of 2017 during the totality of the Great American Solar Eclipse. So cool. Cool. Yeah, so cool. (laughs) We figured since the engagement had a space theme, it would be perfect to carry that over into the wedding. Our wedding theme is space or starry night beautiful when i began the wedding planning process i started looking up themes for the wedding and noticed a common occurrence they all looked more like a prom than a wedding which i can see how that can happen and that's where we kind of go we say it kind of gets a little cheesy Mm -hmm. Uh, my question for you is what can i do with my color scheme decorations flowers etc to have a wedding that looks elegant instead of like a cheap prom I looked up some ideas on Pinterest and I made a Pinterest board Woo-hoo. and the link is on the show notes on 177. I think it would start with the color palettes. Absolutely. Because that way you can take the color palette and you can expand on your decor, your flowers, things like that. I love the midnight blue and golds. The midnight blue, because it's kind of that dark sky right before it really gets pitch black mm-hmm. dark. Mm-hmm. You know, the twilight things Mm -hmm. and then the golds and stuff just pop they really do those yeah um there's also black purple fuchsia because you know the space yes you know when you when you look at a nebula you know you see all these pictures of nebulas they're all fuchsias purples blues blacks you know all of those are in there 
the themes, you can use the constellations. I saw a lot of things with the different constellations on them. They used them for table numbers. They used them for, you know, escort cards and things like that. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to go with with a midnight sky and starred tablecloths. And, and, you know, you don't have to do that. You can go like a normal, pretty uh, white tablecloth and then add the accents to it. The midnight Mm -hmm. blue. And you can use that in your decor and your floral. I mean, are there any midnight blue flowers? Well, there's a lot of blue flowers. You can, you know, it doesn't have to be midnight blue. But I mean, there are some like purple tulips and things like Mm -hmm. that if you're going to that purple route or and then there's some dyed dendrobian orchids where the blues and the fuchsias yes, come in yes. and things like that yeah so i mean there's all you know you need to talk to your your floral person if you want to use these colors because they're going to have to special order some things mm-hmm. but you could even go like all white and then add pops of dark blue like or yeah or something like that and the other the other theme I saw was to the moon and back, which I know you said you got engaged during the total eclipse. To the moon, it was a, it was a sweet theme. There's a lot of pictures on the Pinterest board for that, so I I thought it was sweet because it was like, you know how in um the Christmas movie It's a Wonderful Life mm-hmm. where you know, he George lassoed the moon and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and I always thought that was so sweet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. You don't have to make it cheesy and promish. You can you mm-hmm. can actually act, absolutely make it uh, stunning and uh, elegant. And I'm thinking, yeah. and I when you, when you were saying gold, I was thinking, ooh, the mercury gold glasses with a little, mm-hmm. you know, candlelight. I think is going to be very starry ish yeah. and very romantic. So you can absolutely do it. Yeah, fairy lights. You know, strategically place fairy lights behind gossamer curtains and things like that. Yes. It doesn't, they don't have to be hanging where you see the fairy lights or anything like that. So, I mean, you just have to use your imagination. Let me say something about lights. They have, they have lights that they don't twinkle, but they fade in and out all, all different, um, not at the same time. You know what I mean? So like this whole line of lights is not like twink on, come on, on. Mm. They all kind of fade in and out and it's very starry-ish. I love that idea behind the 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 gossamer, is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Just, oh, that would be so pretty. <laughs> mm. I love lights. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, there's a, there's, there's a picture of a tent where they had the lights, you know, from the tent eaves down to the peaks and it had the covers over it and it was really nice it looked like a starry sky so you you know i bet you could go with even a dark colored instead of the white sheer you could go with a dark mm-hmm. sheer and have those lights kind of shining through yeah Ooh, that would be pretty so thanks for the question we hope we helped you out a little bit you know I, like we said make it elegant and classy not cheesy and promise yes <laughs> Thank you. Yes, thank you. And and if you want to email us a question from ring, info at from ring to veil dot com, Facebook, from ring to veil, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, wherever we're we're there, send us a message. We have the wedding and timeline, uh, wedding timelines and checklists still available for two ninety nine. Thank you for those purchases, and we hope you are loving them. If you have anything that you can think of that needs to be added, let us know. And you can find those at fromringtovel.com slash checklists. And don't forget about our Facebook group, From Ring to Vell Wedding Planning Community, and our Facebook page, because we still like you to, you know, jump over there too. Mm-hmm. Subscribe to the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, CastBox, Alexa, anywhere you listen. Subscribe. And until next time, no stress, no worries. Keep calm and listen on. Music provided by bensound.com.